Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to Virtual Path Day and this session for URI Transfer for Education, Government, and Human Services students. Um, this is being recorded so that we can save it for students in the future. And right away, I'd like to turn it over to Victor Silva from URI. Thanks for being with us today, Victor. Jessica, thank you so much for having me. I'm going to share my screen if that's all right. And if you wouldn't mind when I pull up my presentation, just to make sure that um, it comes up here. So let's see. Almost there. Does it look right? All right, thank you so much. And thank you for those folks who have joined us today. I really appreciate it and you taking the time to learn a little bit more about the University of Rhode Island. Um, depending upon whether you're a lifelong Rhode Islander like myself or maybe new to the area and taking classes at CCRI, um, you know, um, Rhode Island is a great, uh, Rhode Island is a great place, but with great opportunities, and especially with the relationship between the Community College of Rhode Island and the University of Rhode Island. So you, there's a chance you may have not visited campus before, and, and that's fine, but to share some campus facts with you. So we're in the southern part of the state, you know, when you're heading down towards the beaches. Um, we're ranked as a number, our number three best value school. So the value, the return on the investment, the value proposition here of your degree, and then, you know, your opportunities from graduating. And then one of the th most beautiful coastal college campuses. So we're excited about that designation. It's a great place to learn and live if you have the opportunity to do so. We're considered a medium-sized institution, so just under 15,000 students at 14,687 undergraduates. When you add our graduate students, excuse me, we're closer to um, 17,000. So again, a good-sized institution. We'll talk about class sizes, you know, and how that relates to our actual population, but we are um, Rhode Island's flagship public research university, so a lot of opportunities for you to have hands-on experience within your major, especially within these fields of education, um, politics, and, and human studies. So um, even though we are the largest institution in the state, we do have some folks from outside of it. So we're about 53% in-state, 47% out-of-state and international. The student body is represented by 48 states and 76 nations, which this is fantastic because you have folks from all different places in the world, all different places in the country. And when you're having those discussions in your classes, you know, you're bringing in a lot of outside perspectives. So it's not just folks that have lived here their whole lives like me, you know, and providing their experience in this you know, um, the smaller sense of the world, but learning how people do just some different things in either their countries or the states that they're from. So great having that kind of outside perspective in your classrooms. 25% of our incoming students identify as students of color. We talked about our size, but in relation to our student to faculty ratio, still pretty close, 16 to one. 85% um, of our faculty have doctoral or terminal degrees, meaning that they're experts in their field. You are learning from folks that um, have participated in research, been out in industry, contribute a lot to these particular fields, and again, they are experts in, you know, what you'll be planning on studying. And 76% of our classes have fewer than 30 students, and that's especially true for our transfer students because you're probably transferring with a good amount of those general education requirements being completed, right? So you wouldn't be in those larger lecture hall style classes. There may be some, but even like that, they break out into smaller groups. So you are in a more familiar environment, you know, where you're really going to get to know your, your faculty the students in your classes and your advisors. And that's something important to know. You are going to have an advisor assigned to you um, from your specific program. And they're going to assist you with scheduling every term, making sure that you're on path to graduate, any questions you have about experiences and, and including that in your degree. And we'll talk about that too, because transfer students are not excluded from any sense of um, opportunities and whether they be internships, study abroad, those kinds of things. Housing and residential life. So some folks still, you know, may be interested in living on campus, even if they're from, you know, their home might be from a commutable distance. I'm from the Warwick area and I commute to campus every day when we go to the office and it's doable. But we do have some students that want to live on campus and also in the surrounding area, which we call down the line, you know, so kind of stretching from Narragansett, South Kingstown, um, Charlestown. So living in those beach homes and then commuting over to, um, to campus for the year. So that's an option for you, but you do not have to live on campus if you do not wish. So 
again, open to you as a transfer student, not required, and some great options if you are thinking about um, living on campus. So our academics, we have eight degree granting colleges. So depending upon your major, they may be found in a few different places, but we have over 90 majors to choose from. And if something's a major, more often than not, it's a minor. So you could do that um, even as a transfer student, you could double major, you could have a major and a minor. So we have our College of Arts and Sciences, our College of Health Sciences, College of Nursing, College of Pharmacy. For those folks interested in education, our Alan's John Feinstein College of Education and Professional Studies, College of Business, College of Engineering, and College of Environment and Life Sciences. And what I'm gonna do um, in a little bit too after the formal presentation is I'll take you to some helpful resources on the website that you can, um, you can look at. It'll make a little bit more sense of your potential transfer. So we talked about those opportunities quick. So those opportunities, you know, um, as a transfer student, just because you're transferring, you might have your associate's degree and a significant amount of credit already, doesn't mean you still can't do these things. So most of our programs have an internship built into them or have the space to intern, depending upon your field, they might be required, like I said, or just a, um, an option for you, but probably maybe a very beneficial option, depending upon what you're looking to study. We have study abroad, um, 70, 700 plus locations, or excuse me, programs in 75 countries. We're, all, we're on every single continent. You know, even Antarctica, there's an option to, uh, for some of our students. Um, you do have the opportunity to perform undergraduate research, which is great. This is not just for our graduate students. We have plenty of undergraduate opportunities for you. And that's important too, to make those connections with your faculty, because they're often the ones participating in these projects and they'll say, you know, you know, I'm working on this particular research project or I'll be, you know, publishing this study, is anyone interested or willing to help? And they may toss it out casually, but it's something that they do want you to, to um, take them up on. So definitely um, something worth doing to add to your resume. You can participate in leadership opportunities either through class classes in a minor or being on campus. We do have an honors program as well, open to transfer students. And something we're very excited about is 90% of our graduates are employed or enrolled in graduate programs within six months of graduation. So you're continuing on in your particular field, whether it requires additional degrees or you know, you're entering in your specific field of study. School spirit. So we are an NCAA Division I school. We compete in the Atlantic 10 Conference. So a very competitive conference, great Rhode Island spirit on campus. We are the Rams. I got the Ram behind me. Um, you'll see most folks wearing um, URI gear on campus. You know that spirit is strong amongst the community. Even if that's not for you, we do have club and intramural sports. We have different events that happen at the Ryan Center every year, our biggest on-campus facility where a basketball team plays. And we have our large alumni and family weekend where students of the past come together with students that are current students. And it's great networking and just, you know, sharing in different events on campus, meeting people and um, making sure everyone's feeling a part of that family that we have on campus, our campus culture. Getting involved. So if you're involved now, or maybe you were involved in high school, but haven't necessarily found your way yet at the Community College of Rhode Island, but are looking for opportunities afterwards, we have more than 300 clubs and organizations on campus. We have different centers that you can volunteer at that'll have different programming as well. The biggest thing is I think if you can't find it from us, we encourage you to start it because there's probably some like-minded folks out there that are interested in the same things you're interested in, but don't know how to have their space on campus. So you could always petition to Student Senate for your idea of your club or organization, whether it be service-based, professionally focused, or special interest, you know, that opportunity is available to you. But I do think we have a lot of things covered just with the amount of, um, clubs and organizations that we have on campus already established. And then the biggest thing, I think students wanna know how to apply. So um, I'm gonna talk about things very broad and then get a little bit more specific when I get to my um, resources on the website. So in general, to apply, you would have to submit the transfer common application and that's on our website. I'll show you where you folks can find that. You will have to submit an official high school transcript unless you're going to have an associate's degree by the time that you enroll. So if you were graduating this December, you were, you were applying for spring, you would not have to submit a high school transcript. It would just be the CCRI transcript and any other colleges you've attended. So 
official college transcripts from all schools attended, and then we do have a $65 application fee. You're going to see there that credit evaluations are performed after admissions. So we perform credit evaluations for accepted students. Now, the nice thing about being a community college of Rhode Island student is that we have a very um, broad, or excuse me, robust articulation agreement with CCRI, meaning that we accept a lot of courses from, from the community college of Rhode Island. So I'm going to show you a resource um, in a second here that you can kind of look through your unofficial transcript or your degree pathway and see which courses from your degree could potentially transfer over um, to your program here at the University of Rhode Island. Spring application deadline is December 15th, so still plenty of time for those folks that might be transitioning for the spring. And then our fall transfer application deadline is June 1st. Financial aid, for our in-state students, you'll stay on the left-hand column there where it says Rhode Island residents. That's our tuition, um, excuse me, tuition and fees, the top number there, they're $15,004. If you're living on campus, $13,002. For out of state residents, you can see the cost there. We do have for those students that are out of state but fall within a regional major program, um, a discounted tuition option. But those are the numbers there. You definitely want to apply for your financial aid, add URI, um, URI school code to your financial aid, especially if you're applying for spring. Go back into the one you completed, add us to it if you're doing your new one and you anticipate in transferring for fall. Even though you might not have an acceptance in yet, that's fine. You can do all of this, complete your financial aid. Um, in advance of receiving a decision from admissions. Merit scholarships. We do offer merit scholarships at the university. You do not have to submit any additional information. Um, it happens at the time of admission. So you'd have a minimum of 24 transferable credits and a 3.3 GPA to be considered for a merit scholarship. We also offer a Phi Theta Kappa scholarship. That one you would have to show proof of membership for Phi Theta Kappa and it's the highest amount that a transfer student can receive. So if you're starting to get those letters or those emails about joining Phi Theta Kappa, it's definitely worth it. It's an honor society at the two-year um, two level, the two-year institution level. So it's usually for exceptional students, I believe above a 3.7 um, or 3.5, depending upon um, the institution, but worth researching because again, the return that you could have in potential scholarship is great. And then a couple other things. So right now we're not doing in-person tours, but we're allowing students to come on campus and do self-guided tours. We do have virtual options on campus, or excuse me, on our website, which I'll show you. Um, I'm taking individual meetings. So if a student wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one with me to discuss their potential transfer path, you can schedule that with me and I'll show you where to do it. We have student chats um, available on our website. We have sessions like this um, on an on-demand basis available on the website and we'll have some open house events coming up um, in the spring. So to be determined whether or not they're virtual, um, but we're hoping that you know, we can provide some more camp, um, on-campus opportunities for students coming up. So again, that's kind of a basic rundown and I wanna show you, as I mentioned, those helpful resources that we have on our website. So I'm gonna pull up our browser here, excuse me. And for the first one, for any of these, actually, I find it pretty easy just to Google it. So if you just type in your search engine, URI transfer admission, this is the main landing page for all information transfer. So I'm gonna access a lot of different things here. Um, so it's a good one to remember, it's a bookmark. But once you're on here, it talks about our application deadlines and general transfer policy. And from this link here with the folks scuba diving, this is where you can actually find the common application. So I said that's step one, completing the application, right? So you'll go here, fill out the application as a transfer student. There are no essays or letters of recommendation required as part of that process. Excuse me, we can't see the screen. Oh, thank you for telling me that, I appreciate it. Um, let me do this, new share. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Can you tell me if you can see it now? Yes. All right, thank you, sorry about that. So let me just do that again, um, just so you folks can see what I was doing. So you are I transfer admission, just in your search engine. First link that comes up, and then for all that information I just talked about, and again, I apologize, um, it'll load up here. So some helpful links, you know, before you apply, your application checklist, and then again, these folks scuba diving will take you to the common application. 
This section here is where you can register for a virtual transfer chat. So I hold transfer chats on Friday afternoons, every Friday. So if you wanted to um, join one of those, it's very, um, very informal. You come in and ask whatever questions you would like. Um, I'm usually manning the, the session with potentially my director. But in any case, like I said, if you have a quick question, it's Friday or you have a lot of questions and you want to come on and um, ask them, feel free. Our virtual tour link is listed right there right underneath and then our general transfer requirements so a little bit about what i was talking about the application now under that application what does it mean to be accepted so this gives you the guideline if you have less than 24 credits you will need a minimum of a 2.8 gpa to be considered for admission if you have 24 or excuse me 25 credits to 60 without an associate's degree it would be a 2.5 and if you have an associate's degree by the time that you're transferring it would be a 2.4 so again, you can access this information here. I'm gonna go back one page. Some programs are considered competitive programs. Um, and under those competitive programs, there might be some additional requirements, but I'll use the School of Education for an example. It lists, um, lists the requirements here, but it really follows the, um, the general policies here. And then there is a secondary um, application process. You know, As you're going through your program, um, of secondary ed or one of the education programs here, you know, and that information can be found there too. So again, helpful resources for you to make sure that you know what to expect in the application process, or I mean, at any time, obviously you can contact me as well. So a link to the scholarships we talked about, a link to majors if you wanted more information about that. And again, it gets pretty specific here about applying and any questions you may have. Our contact information is listed at the bottom. And then there's a meet your counselor link here. This meet your counselor link will take you to my schedule. So um, we'll go to transfers and I'll just show you how to do it. So my picture comes up, you'll schedule a meeting with me. It takes me to my calendar. So if you were looking for something on the 16th, you can see all the open appointments that I have available on the 16th. The green days are where the, um, the appointments are open. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit more about transferable credit and that articulation we have with the Community College of Rhode Island. So what I would like you to do, or what I would encourage you to do, is type in URITES, so URITES. This is gonna take you to our transferable courses database. It's this first one that comes up, University of Rhode Island TES Public View Management. It's a pretty plain screen, but it's every, the, um, all the colleges and universities are listed alphabetically, so you can go to C, and I know it's on page three, and we pull up the Community College of Rhode Island. So a lot of information here as far as the classes that you've taken and what they equal at URI. Now you'll say, Victor, well, how does this actually make sense for me? The next thing I would have you do is type in URI curriculum sheets in a second tab. And these curriculum sheets will show you all the classes available, uh, excuse me, all the classes that are required for specific majors. So I'm going to use, let's say, early childhood education as, I, um, as an example. So under here, you'll get some good information like who your actual academic advisor is when you attend the program. And then these curriculum sheets. So you go to 2020 and information about the program, but it starts to list out the classes that are required in your major. And this is helpful because when you start looking at your classes, you can go back to this website and say, okay, I have taken, you know, let's use these HDF classes, for example, or any of the education classes. You can look for them alphabetically to see what their equivalent would be, um, even for your general education requirements. So if people have taken um, ENGL 1010, you know, English composition, what is that at URI? So um, this is a helpful resource to kind of give yourself an um, unofficial evaluation and you can kind of check the boxes off in the curriculum sheet. But at any point, once you're accepted to university, you are going to receive an official credit evaluation done by the faculty. So that'll make a little bit more sense, especially if you're having trouble doing this on your own. So those are the things I wanted to go over with you folks. Um, I wanted to leave a good amount of time for questions if anyone had them, or if I can um, redirect you to any information. Again, I just wanna pull up here 
our contact information. So if you have questions moving forward, again, it's on the bottom of the transfer resource, or excuse me, the transfer admissions page. And it's pretty easy. It's just transfer admission at uri.edu. So I definitely recommend um, to reach out to me. You know, we can talk about your individual process to make sure that you are on path to transfer with any, um, without any issue. Um, if you have questions specific to your transfer, it's worthwhile to, or just to be even be reassured in the process, I'm happy to do that. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please feel free. So if you have any questions for Victor, feel free to take yourself off of mute or you can type it in the chat. And thank you again for joining. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Jessica, for the opportunity. You're very welcome. And um, Victor, could you just put your uh, email in the chat so yes. that if students have any questions in the future, they can let us know. And I will also um, put the link to our transfer webpage in there, just so you have it um, if you want to click on it. And those of you watching and recording can check the details or description in the YouTube channel as well for these links. Great. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today and to encourage you to attend our other sessions later in the day. Um, Rhode Island College is up next um, at noon, I believe. And um, then later in the day, you can meet faculty from the programs in education, government, and human services. And available right now is a recording of a previous Path Day session. I'm meeting uh, CCRI's Career Services Office. And um, something else that's available from Career Services right now is preparation information for the virtual job fair that is coming up this Thursday, November 12th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that's happening virtually in Handshake. And you can find out more about Handshake on the CCRI website. Um, if you search for career services, but you can also find more information about the job fair on the virtual path day page, which led you to this session as well. So we do have one chat that came in privately, um, uh, Jessica, if you don't mind, but the sure. question in general from Davina, how is your social work program? So we don't have an actual social work program. It's not labeled as such, but we have a sociology major, but we also have a human, um, excuse me, a human development and family studies major, which offers a lot of parallels all over to social work. So from that website, um, you can take a look at it and take a look at the description, the courses. And if you want me to send more information on that, I think you'd really enjoy that program if you're interested in social work. It's human development and family study. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much again, everyone for attending. And thank you, Victor, for being with us today. Appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. You too.